A number of years ago, my wife and I had a memorable tour through Peru, enjoying its sights, culture, landscape, and history. Join me on the first of a two-part series as we venture to Lima and through the sacred valley to Oliente Tambo while providing some history of the Inca Empire. Peru has quite a diverse landscape. It has a coastal desert on the western Pacific, and it's quickly overtaken by the Andes Mountains, the world's longest mountain range, running the entire length of western South America with impressive elevations and plateaus. And the Andes give way to jungles to the east, including the Amazon rainforest in the upper northeast. Our journey begins with a short stay in the capital city of Lima, where our highlight is a museum with Inca treasures. We continue to Cusco, high in the Andes, where we head to the Sacred Valley. We enjoy an alpaca farm and a brief stop in Pizac. Continuing along the Sacred Valley, we visit the Inca town of Aliente Tambo. We were surprised to find Lima to be very dry for a coastal city. It actually has a desert climate. Lima was founded in 1535 by the Spanish conquistadors following their defeat of the Inca Empire. It then became the center of Spanish rule for all of South America and is considered to have the best Spanish colonial architecture in all of South America. Its main square is Plaza de Armas, where the independence of Peru was declared in 1821. The Presidential Palace was rebuilt in 1937 in the French Baroque style. The Cathedral of Lima was built in 1535, which houses the tomb of Francisco Pizarro, the leader of the Spanish conquistadors. And adjacent is the Archbishop's Palace. Not far away, we check out the Monastery of San Francisco, which was built in 1674 and considered the most spectacular of Lima's colonial-era churches. Catacombs were discovered under the church in 1943. Unfortunately, photography was not allowed inside. Our highlight of Lima was the Larco Museum with ancient artifacts spanning 2,000 years of various cultures along with Inca treasures. They had a family. They were artists. They were like you and me. They were people that they had social classes. These large pots are from the Inca period, and soon we'll see the grand showcase of large gold pieces worn by the Incas. We now fly to Cusco. The Andes were the home of the Incas. They originated in Cusco, which became their capital and was a major center by 1100 AD. The expansion of the Inca Empire began about 1438 and was largely completed by 1525, spanning north into Ecuador and far south into Chile and Argentina. 
the Incas linked their regions together with a network of stone trails which all led to Cusco. Following Columbus's voyage in 1492, Spanish colonization of the New World began. The conquistadors had the advantage of a cavalry, but being in the low hundreds, they were vastly outnumbered. Both Inca and Aztec empires were just shy of a hundred years old and had recently grown by conquest and oppression of various tribal kingdoms. So many tribes sided with the conquistadors, adding thousands of auxiliaries to fight against their domination. And add to the mix the introduction of European diseases, which eventually took a large toll on the native population. Hernan Cortes defeated the Aztecs in Mexico in 1521, and 14 years later, Francisco Pizarro defeated the Incas in Peru by 1535. It was Inca gold and Aztec gold that made their way onto Spanish galleons which sailed through the treacherous Caribbean back to Spain, sometimes falling prey to pirates, and sometimes succumbing to tropical storms and hurricanes to become legendary sunken treasure. The city of Cusco is on a high plateau in the Andes at an elevation of 3,400 meters or 11,000 feet. With Cusco's thinner air, it sometimes takes a couple days to climatize. So like most tours do, we leave Cusco right away and head down to the sacred valley at lower elevations and spend time in Cusco on the way back. Although the conquistadors were very intent on obtaining all the gold they could find, they also found another item which was to become a significant treasure to the rest of the world. The potato, the staple in our food today, originated from Peru and was introduced to Europe by the Spanish around 1570. Around 4,000 varieties of potato exist in the Andes, and it's common in a single household to grow a dozen or more. Our first stop is at Awana Cancha, a living museum with a quaint little alpaca farm. Alpacas are common in the Andes and are like a small llama. They're bred for their wool, which is soft and silky. So throughout our trip, the most popular item in the market is scarves or clothing made from baby alpaca. Watch out with your fingers, okay? Juana Cancha also has a fabulous display of traditional textile making with dyes, weaving, and its own store. We continue to the ancient town of Pizac at the entrance to the sacred valley of the Incas. Below is the town of Pizac and you can see the hillside lined with terraces built by the Incas for growing crops and are still in use today. It is also thought that Pizac also defended the southern entrance to the sacred valley. The original town of Pizac was up on the hill and largely destroyed by the conquistadors in the 1530s. The town below was built 40 years later. And towards the left is the direction we'll be taking to Oliente Tambo. But first, we make a quick stop in Pizac to see their local market. It's amazing how these big buses navigate through the narrow streets. The Sacred Valley follows the Urubamba River up to the Inca town of Aliente Tambo, which is about halfway to Machu Picchu. It was a major center for agricultural production for the Incas, and today it continues as the breadbasket for Cusco. We stop for lunch at a beautiful spot before the town of Aliente Tambo.
Aliente Tambo is a beautiful site. When Inca Emperor Pachacuti conquered the region around 1450, he built the town, including a ceremonial center and his royal estate. It also defended the northern entrance to the Sacred Valley. And today, Aliente Tambo is described as a living Inca town with residents maintaining ancient traditions. These are considered some of the oldest, continuously occupied dwellings in South America. You can see the fine Inca stonework in the building foundations and cobblestone streets with running water with easy access to all the homes. The buildings up on the hill were used as storage rooms for surplus crops, dried potato, dried corn, and dried meat. And this is an example of a traditional home. On the floor are guinea pigs, which are a major food item in Peru, with millions eaten every year. And on the shelf is skulls of their ancestors. And across the way are the terraces of Puma Talas. Our guide called them the 200 steps. The Incas were good at turning unusable terrain into productive farming areas. The retaining walls not only supported flat planting surfaces, they protected the crops from the wind and absorbed solar radiation during the day and released it during the night. This creates a microclimate some two to three degrees warmer and allows the Incas to grow plants native to lower altitudes. Out of 200 steps, I think 100 is enough right now. <laughs> At the time of the Spanish conquest, Aliente Tambo had served as a stronghold for Manco Inca, the leader of the Inca resistance. When Cusco was effectively under Spanish domination, Manco came here and fortified the town and its approaches. When the conquistadors arrived with an auxiliary army, Manco managed to defend their position from these high terraces by flooding the plains below, which caused the conquistadors to retreat. Following this small victory, Spanish reinforcements later forced Manco to abandon Aliente Tambo and seek refuge in the heavily forested region of Vilcabamba, where they survived another 38 years until they were found. Be sure to catch the second half of our journey where we take a scenic train ride to Aguas Calientes where the landscape changes to jungle. We visit mystical Machu Picchu high on the crest of a mountain. We ride through the highlands of the Andes to visit the old Inca capital of Cusco and the ruins of Sacsayhuaman. If you enjoy my videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new releases. It's free and sharing with your friends is much appreciated.